Hello, YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about Mega Leo constellation, meaning low Earth orbit satellite constellation. So let's dive right into it. Now, what exactly we are talking about here? We are talking about a ludicrously large number of satellites. Now, all those satellites are supposed to be doing one thing. Be mindful, we have boatload of satellites, like 5,000, 6,000. That's not a, you know, quote unquote constellation system. All the satellites have to be doing the same thing. For example, there are many uh, satellites that are doing weather observations. So they will be classified as this constellation series is doing this. Then you will have GPS constellations. Then you will have GLONASS constellations. But all the satellites in that system must be doing the same thing. Then it will be classified as a constellation part. So right now the number that will classify uh, that will give you the you know credit of mega is 1000. Now be mindful at this point in time there is only one company which I will not name because I'm pretty sure you can guess which has crossed that point. So if you cross 1000 satellites you are like okay you are in mega category because while one web did try to uh, you know aim for the stars quote unquote like 40,000 satellites and people are like really bro really are you sure about that they're like yeah we really can't do that even though uh, airtel basically uh, indian telecommunication giant and uh, you know british government both of them uh, poured money into it to stop it from sinking uh, now they have scaled back to like you know 7000 satellites so uh, still okay still above 1000 so it still will be classified as uh, mega satellites and then there is a feasibility that they might be able to pull it off and there are many players that want to do this we are very familiar with spacex that's obvious then we have amazon now many times people are like amazon is too behind schedule yes and no yes they are very behind schedule but they have foothold on things that you do not understand for example amazon services for common people is very important meaning i can guarantee you most of you are watching with this video have ordered amazon in last week or a month i can guarantee it and on top of that amazon have something known as amazon web services which to give you a context of that runs things like netflix so they have internet backbone on their side so if they uh, you want to decide to you know launch a satellite system if they can make hot links from uh, basically amazon web service to Ky uh, kuiper project they're like they will literally have a heads up that spacex will not be able to match simply because spacex does not have internet backbone behind their you know backyard it's like for jeff bezos like bro call up the amazon web services yeah bro can you can you can you give a hot link there you get that point. So Amazon still has some horsepower. And then OneWeb. OneWeb being the advantage being, yes, it did went bankrupt. Yes, it was revived. But it does have physical hardware in space. And there are many, many more, which includes at this point in time, Chinese government pouring their whole lot of money into this. Because this is the important thing. Any Tom, Dick and Harry who cracks it is going to be rich. Now, how the heck they're going to be rich? Well, internet. Internet at this point in time is very huge cash cow, meaning people will pay you boatload of money to get a good service. Now, what do I mean by good service? Meaning low latency. How low? Meaning you should be able to do everything that you can do on internet without noticing it. Meaning uh, around, if you are below 50 milliseconds, it's like, okay, internet. If you are below tw uh, 20, it's good internet. Below 5, GG internet. Now, 50 to 20 at that point in time people are like you know deal with it. People, people yeah the call would be like a bit laggy but your ear will compensate for that your psychology is like i can manage that so you will not notice it too much so be mindful if you can drop the latency below 50 millisecond is more than good enough for almost everything which cannot be done by geostationary satellite just due to physics of it meaning how far it is so you have to create low latency and high bandwidth, meaning you cannot be like, okay, pay a boatload of uh, load of money and then we're going to give you a you know, 10 Mbps connection. Yeah, no, no, that's not going to fly. It must be able to do everything a household does. For example, multiple Netflix 4K streaming. So that's like a bare minimum. Then you have a large file download. So meaning we are talking about around 50 Mbps, good, stable without like below 50 mbps no nope. that that's like a no nope territory 100 mbps that's good territory gbps ultra gg but like again most more than enough people even household will be satisfied if they can have 100 mbps reliably i have 150 mbps i'm like i downgraded i did not need it to go higher than that so it's like in my area i can easily get to uh, you know i have a direct fiber to the home so i i'm not too worried about it but many people don't have that luxury surprisingly way too many people and that's another aspect of it Yes, people will pay for the internet, but you have to understand why would people pay higher prices compared to fiber? Because way too many able people, be mindful, able people, meaning people who are willing to pay are underserved by current system. Thankfully, India has made dramatic progress in this department. We went from not having good internet to literally having internet that literally, when I'm talking, talking about this to American people, it's like, wait a minute, you are living in a, a town that is so small, does not even have an airport, does not even have McDonald's, it's like very small town and you have freaking fiber to the home and you don't even care about, yeah, we have three people who can pro uh, three companies that provide fiber to the home even small towns and i'm uh, you know commuting to a small town now even smaller than my town 
and it also has fiber so it's really good at that. and given the fact that we have two giant co uh, companies one is airtel another is geo going head to head to provide fiber to the home for whole of india that means if you are in a good like even a small a modicum of a city or uh, you know town you will have a good quality connection. now that's not a case for everything and for example rural areas still have that issue and many time because after 2020 people want to do what we call work from home it requires good internet you cannot do work from home if your internet is not stable people and those people who are making a lot of money in let's say metropolitan city for example like bangalore silicon valley of india uh, they are they are happy they will literally love to move to their you know small lovely town but they can't they don't have good internet and they have enough bank balance that they can pay you they're like shut up and take my money if you give me good service so that number is huge much larger than that. and it's kind of tragic that in usa that number is even huger simply because the telecommunication companies there are like you know lol they literally government was paying them dude i'm paying you i know it uh, does not make financial sense to lay down the fiber to a rural communication but i'm paying you for that and then you will build them there they're like yeah pay us money pay us come on pay us money it's like can you pay us more money it's like government is like uh where is your fiber it's like no no just keep paying us money so it's a really tragic that it happened but it did happen so reality is there is a lot of pent-up demand and the scope and scale of this industry is so huge that it can support many players meaning it will not be like where you have like 60 70 companies uh, dealing with this uh, but you can easily have two to three good players uh, you know playing in this so it is significant market it's like it has bought a lot of money and it has enough money for enough people so this is significant meaning you can have good competition in this also now let's come to second uh, money making department which is global positioning now mega constellation beats even the best system flat out you are talking about gps now many people know this for a fact engineering has a law as in you build it first or you build it better for example gps is the worst global navigation system out there it's like how well every system other than this was built based on the mistakes of this basically oh you have this fault i'm gonna fix this fault for example the second constellation system uh, uh, GLONASS. Now GLONASS was Russian built and they improved the numbers of satellite. They, they figured it out. They do, you do not have good polar coverage. We're going to improve the polar coverage. We're going to improve the numbers of satellite. They learned from the mistakes of GPS and they're like, okay. Then you have European senior, which built uh, Galileo. And Galileo, they're like, dude, uh, you have more satellites. You have uh, like, you know, this, that, but all of your atomic clocks are really low grade. We're going to improve the, uh, you know, clock imp uh, stability. So they have even better. All these three things combined all of them and a Starlink will be like, bitch please. Just like, don't, don't, don't come to me. Like, don't, don't. So that's the reality of it. Now, be mindful. At this point in time, Starlink is not designed for that. However, people as like very smart people who knows how to deal with softwares and uh, software defined radio. I mean, high caliber software defined radio. They have figured it out how to extract data from the satellite. Is like. Are you a satellite? Yes or no? Okay. Which satellite? Numbering wise, as in like this number. Where are you like, you know, orbit plane? Based on the Doppler shift, based on the phase changing antenna, because all these satellites are using phase shift system, just by eavesdropping, they figured it out their location. Just by eavesdropping. Let that sink in. There is no uh, data point where they're like, okay, this satellite itself is telling me where I am. It's like, I'm just guessing. Based on that, they were very precise. They were like uh, within five to six meters square now that may not sound very good because even a gps is like you know three meters square be mindful this was not designed for it then it's going to, to that level of precision and right now uh, starlink is not completely full as in like it only has uh, 14 1500 satellite or let's say 1600 by the time you are watching this video and uh, their end game end game is 40,000 satellites heck let's say they you know settle at uh, 10,000 satellite it would be far more precise and if they actually fine tune for it it's like okay we're just gonna uh, you know yell out a time signal and we're gonna yell out like which satellite i am based on that they can boost accuracy and if they did that the end there is no navigation system that can beat that flat out now then there comes another aspect is there a demand for it will people pay for it short answer absolutely have you heard of this something known as auto driving cars self-driving cars those equipment require really really ludicrously precise navigation system flat out there is no question no but no if you cannot say that oh you know you are like you know uh, you're surrounded by tall buildings so signals is not reaching it that's that's not gonna fly it has to be good so fundamentally speaking a simple uh, starling constellation will bit slap it 
there is no discussion about that and it gives you two main advantage for example gps glonass galileo or a bindu system from chinese government all are generally a meo constellation meaning they are talking about around above 20000 kilometers that's a far out system meaning even if you have a, let's say 100 kilowatt not 100 kilowatt is too high but let's say 1 kilowatt uh, transmitter that is like you know yelling out the signal you are getting a very low amount of energy simply because you have to travel to 20000 km and it is a omnidirectional system of course it is in a cone system but still omnidirectional it's not a focus beam it's not phase shifted right to you so inherently the signal integrity and the signal quality signal strength is very low meaning your receivers have to work really hard to grab it compare that to something that is barely 500 km it would be like if you set the signal output to the same level literally it will roast your receiver physically roast it like physically it will burn the receiver so you will have much better coverage and much higher signal strength which in it also means if you have bad weather really poor weather like dust storm things of that nature the system will still work because the signal strength is so goddamn high and mathematics is very simple more satellite equal better it's like this as simple as that like the more satellite you have the better system you can and this is like a starlink right now which is far more than gps right now so be mindful of global positioning there is a lot of demand of that and if spacex actually wants to milk that puppy also assuming they figured out how to make starship because without starship they are broke if they figured it out how that works that that point they will have second cash cow which they can milk if they can solve the regulatory issues if they do that they're going to print some real money then we come to another third money maker system which is observation systems now be very mindful we have lot of observations like this is one of the satellite image i extracted from noaa system uh, noaa i think 19 or 18 or something like that uh, extracted this system now it does work there are many many satellites that are observing and you want really high quality image sensors there most of them are uh, you know at geostationary looking down on earth now those are amazing but cost uh, you know they have a consequence of being idiotically expensive as in ludicrously expensive so how the heck you can compare something that high quality versus a cheap system here now imagine it this way let's say you have starlink version 2 which could be as high, heavy weight as like let's say 500 kgs assuming like two three generations ahead and in that you know the system you are like okay i'm going to give you enough uh, volume and enough mass of equivalent of a smartphone now let's say you put a camera sensor it won't be very good of course it won't be physical physics is simple on cameras it's like bigger is better there is no who high around this there's like bigger is better so in those sort of scenario you can have like hmm i have a satellite here's the funny thing i have hundreds of satellite behind me also so what can i do is like in like very small i'm talking like uh, watts of power consumption not even watts are like 5 or 6 watt is more than too much for it you have one uh, you know modular camera unit and all you are doing is like you have the best sensor that you can manufacture and then you just keep changing the filter basically you have one that is monochromatic you have another that has a red filter another that has blue filter another that has green another that has infrared another that has ultraviolet another that has like you know uv v uv x like all that filters it's like and you will have a repeat of that because again i have way too many satellites output of that after combining that if you combine all that data it will beat almost every single system that we have on this planet and without even costing bootload of money so how the heck you going to because there is a consequence like your satellites a it's moving b uh, r will come a bit later than g the b you know, like all the rgb data will come you know different times here's the deal if you are familiar with how mars orbiter works is literally the same thing so we have software which we call image stacking uh, stacking i have also done this for moon photography basically you can find things like this where you you take a telephoto lens and you try to take as many photos as you can like you set it on a tripod set it on burst and go trrr, as quickly as you can once you have all that blurry photos why you will have blurry because the atmosphere moves it physically moves it physically is blocking you and unless you have really huge telescope you don't have enough photons to like you know resolve a good crisp picture so you take lot of this like around minimum 100 and then you stack them you're going to be surprised how sharp image you're going to get so if people have done that like this is a common software has do it's even possible by your smartphone on real time it can be done so image stacking add a little bit of ai processing which is not too difficult be mindful is like pixel engineer can do that in his sleep if you do that it will allow god's eye level of uh, you know earth's asset meaning flat out you can see everything now because the sensors are small because the uh, you know physical size of the optics is small do not expect it's going to see every car best case scenario it can see maybe one pixel moving here and there and, and they can assume a car they can still see the roads there because the road is a static object they can re resolve every single static object with ludicrously high precision even in a cloudy weather because again cloud will be uh, you know blocking your view in one satellite it won't be blocking in the second satellite so you're going to get amazing view combine all of them combine hundreds of them like you can have a 
scenario was like one square meter could be pictured by five or ten satellites per second per second is yeah almost that is also feasible if you have ai image stacking you can extract 3d data out of it with high precision so that is amazing level system and it's not very expensive to implement to give you a context of that they already have cameras on starlink's current version which are like for uh, you know tracking star grazing and tracking so if they push that to a bit or even just like okay star stacking they can even use that for space monitoring now be mindful it will not be uh, competitive to james webb telescope or uh, hubble telescope however in terms of field of view it will beat every single system all these star tracker if all they do is like embed that data stream into the satellite laser link and it's like spacex is like okay i'm gonna extract all these satellites if they have good timing data on all of them they can collab, uh, you know combine the system and they will have 360 degree view of the whole space around uh, you know what we call celestial sphere it will be amazing level of detail now of course mind be very mindful all telescope can beat it in terms of like i can focus on this area it's going to destroy every uh, constellation data output but constellation data output will like you know smoke all of these is like give me picture of everything that moved in the solar system it's like constellation like i got this fan so there is boat load of potential there now this is a very low potential scenario because it does require you to put some effort into this uh, uh, you know basically internet main money maker global positioning second money maker this third money maker so I have talked about, uh, you know, all the amazing things it can do. Are there dangers to this? Absolutely. Now, the biggest danger, you must be very tired of this by now, Kessler syndrome. Now, be very mindful. Uh, people are aware that Kessler syndrome is serious and uh, European Union is implementing some laws in their own jurisdiction where there's like, you know, bro, if you have a satellite, you launch this puppy up, it should go poof around 25 years. Meaning if it goes bad, it should self poof in 25 years. How the heck it does that? It's up to you. Now, thankfully, it cannot be done. Uh, not thankfully, as in like really badly, it cannot be done anything above, uh, you know, lower orbit. Basically, the moment you start to cross 1000 uh, kilometer in altitude, your satellites will start to have like 1000 year, 2000 year decay orbit time. And when you're talking about geostationary, think of it this way. Why the heck we have graveyard orbit? It's easier. It takes much less energy to push it from graveyard orbit to uh, basically geostationary to graveyard orbit. Because you have to understand it this way you put both load of energy into a satellite to put it into the orbit to deorbit it you need to put the same amount of energy basically remove the same amount of energy. how the heck are you going to remove it like people assume that we're going to have a tiny rocket and it's going to slow down no it's not going to do anything especially to anything that's in medium uh, you know medium or orbit it's not going to do anything it's like okay you just change the orbit now of course that could be desirable if you can like you know move some big stuffs or you know clump a lot of big stuff into one easily trackable system that would be desirable that would be a good cleanup it's like hey we have 10 20 big objects scattered around let's collapse all of them into one big ball that would be desirable but uh, imagining it this way is like oh we're just gonna collapse it in wrath that's super difficult that's why we are not doing it why do you think we have anti-satellite weapon that just poofs it like even think of this way like even if russia what they did they know for a fact that they could create a Kessler syndrome they know for a fact that they can literally destroy their own arsenal of space systems but why did you do it because that's the cheapest way of doing it there is no other way like you have to launch a falcon 9 on top of falcon 9 just to grab a satellite and deorbit it reliably and good luck trying to do that at any higher altitude than medium earth orbit so that creates a very serious issue Kessler syndrome is serious thankfully all the companies are uh, who are working on mega constellation they are focusing on leo meaning they are below 5000 kilometers and uh, all of them are designing the system from ground up to like self poof in around uh, you know 10 years now elon Musk uh, stated i data point is five years now again be mindful five years have not passed yet so we do not know how that will turn out to be true but it does cause a consequence of blinding the earth observation flat out every uh you know the more and more more and more satellites you put it flat out blocks it meaning your sensor could be looking there now people are oh we're gonna reduce the albedo that's not gonna do anything because you're gonna have a satellite that's like i can't see anything Okay, now I can see. So inherently, it's gonna you know uh, reduce your exposure. Uh, like exposure window would be shortened. You can't do any wide field astrophotography. Flat out, uh, that is gone. Even radio astronomy, because if you are familiar with radio astronomy, it requires radio silence. I mean, idiotically silent. What uh, what um, like what severity they do? The people working there, they are not allowed mobile phones, meaning the whole area is quarant uh, quarantined in such a way that there is no mobile phones, no mobile tower, no uh, you know television broadcast. HSD. Now you have a giant mobile tower going on top of it. Oh, here's the deal. Hundreds of them going there. It's like radio receivers are like, dude, it's, it's being cooked. It's literally being cooked because you are trying to make it as sensitive as possible. And then you, like when you make it, oh, oh it's like, you know, filter and all that. Here's the, they do not want to use filters because the more they use filter, there is no filter that is 100% efficient. When you have a filter, band filter as they call it, the more filter you add, the less, uh, you know, efficient the system becomes. And at that point you are blind anyway. 
so that creates a blind spot where our radio cannot do much our optical cannot do much we are flat out blind and we do not have space based observation system yet so at this point in time basically we are removing both of our eyes before we have a replacement eyes that is dangerous and then we have the most uh, weird part which i did not thought of that was stupid of me but there is serious risk of polluting the upper atmosphere now, all these satellites they are huge as in like 200 kilograms now that may not sound much 200 kilograms of each starlink satellite but imagine 40000 of those now imagine 500 kilograms of one web satellite that's not much now imagine 7000 of those now you start to see the picture that's huge now you may be like okay when they are crashing and burning they are going poof well that's the problem you uh, what is going poof it's like heavy metals is in like uh, steel as in copper as in things that we do not know about what the heck is going to happen if these sort of refined metals starts to go uh, you know vaporizing on the upper atmosphere and you may be like okay wouldn't they settle down well no you know for a fact that vol uh, volcanic ash can stay in upper atmosphere for ludicrously long amount of time we are literally doing all over the planet and it's much higher than the uh, volcanic ash can go so fundamentally we do not know what these things can do we may be tampering with something that we do not understand fully yet so that is a very big unknown and i'm like more worried about unknowns than i'm worried about like kessler syndrome or basically blinding the author because these things can be solved kessler syndrome can be solved like if you're really really mad about it to just have a as a huge of a ship as like let's say starship and have a big water tank with a mini miniature nuke into that just steam blast everything is like phew, gone because if uh, the you know if its uh, orbit is directly colliding against it it's like you know steam is like bro slow down go down and the things that are coming behind positive direction is like bro speed up leave so that's the easiest way you can just clean clean the orbit it can be done it's really stupid and really difficult difficult to do because you will have a lot of emp uh, you know fallout from that but that's why it has to be contained by water it's because you know the energy needs to be coupled to something in order to do something water is awesome for that it can be done it's like there are uh, plants in order to, where we can do that but you get that point we can solve kessel syndrome if you really need to blinding the earth observation it is a short term blindness so i'm hopeful that we're not going to go poof in during this time but this aspect polluting of the upper atmosphere nobody has any data point it's like okay what the heck is going to happen when you have 50000 lithium ion cells are like you know burning in the upper atmosphere yeah we have no idea so that's kind of unknown that scares me so this was my presentation on basically mega leo constellations hopefully you have liked it learned from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i would have said dislike but you know uh please do comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you are free and as always thanks for watching